Welcome back. This is Markets Today. 41 minutes into the European trading day. Losses of three-tenths of a percent across the European benchmark. Let's focus on technology now. Investors looking to earnings season for a dose of good news are hanging their hopes on a familiar group, Big Tech. The tech-heavy Nasdaq 100 is up almost 40% this year, fueled by the likes of NVIDIA, Alphabet and Amazon. But that rally has flattened out in recent months, with concerns remaining over valuations and headwinds, including high interest rates and sticky inflation. It comes as Europe's leading investors and entrepreneurs gather tomorrow for the annual Investor All-Stars event here in London. Very pleased to say we are now joined by Manish Madhvani, who is the co-founder and managing partner of tech and investment advisory firm GP Bullhand, which puts on the All-Stars, Investor All-Stars event, an annual event. Manish, thanks for coming into the studio. Before we get into the event and what to expect there, what are valuations, what are the VC flows, I should say, looking, looking like now? We've got pitch books suggesting that VC flows for startups in Europe are down about, what, 60% in the first half yeah. of this year from 2022. Are we starting to see, is there more pain ahead or are flows starting to pick up now? I think it's been, a, it's been a really tough adjustment for obviously a lot of money flowing into the sector. Mm. And now this real search for capital efficiency and, and being profitable. And I guess what we've seen, first six months, really tough. A lot of companies had to adjust and they almost enter this bipolar state where they've got to focus on efficiency. But obviously, if they're not driving innovation and growth, then the long term outlook is, is not great. I'd say we're just starting to see some green shoots coming through now and feels like for the first time in a long time that the sector is getting on the front foot. And I think some of the stats that we're looking at closely, when you look at $100 million rounds, so the mega rounds that are fueling the leaders, there was actually a 47% jump quarter on quarter, so Q3 to Q2. You've got to put into the, the summer effect into that. But even then, when you look at historically, it's starting to get its 10% up on last year and starting to get back to 2019 levels. There is an AI boom within that. So yeah. some of the biggest rounds, Anthropic was a $1.3 billion round from Amazon and Databricks raised 500 million. So you're starting to see there's areas of interest, but AI and kind of this next innovation that the market is fascinated by, that is fueling the next level of growth and innovation. What, what, what is your take on AI? Is it rational? I mean, uh, uh, some VCs I speak to say a lot of silly money has been thrown in, into this space. There's concerns about the cost of compute, so just the sheer amount that you have to invest to get the compute under these underlying platforms. Is the, is, what, how does that AI story evolve, do you think? So I think it's, I mean, AI and machine learning, it's been around for quite a long time. What's really changed is, I guess, ChatGPT captured the world's yeah. imagination. And that has fueled a lot of investment coming into the sector. Are you seeing bubbles in the AI space? You're seeing some investments into the tech as opposed to commercial applications. And it may lead to commercial applications, but I think the way we look at it is, what, what effect is it really having on fundamental sectors? So the music sector, we've done a lot in historically. You look at the music sector now, creation. So everybody heard about this ghostwriter who basically cloned the voice of Drake and The Weeknd mm -hmm. and created this incredible track that everyone thought was a genuine track, but was all computer generated. Downloaded nearly a million times in, over the weekend. So blew the industry apart. Mm -hmm. Obviously threw up a load of legal issues and claims, but the impact on content generation is clear. Then you look at accuracy. Can you predict a hit song from the music industry? It's 97% accuracy that AI can detect whether this is going to be a hit now because there's so much data and so many patterns. And then you look at translation. So on Spotify, you can go on to now and download any podcast, translate that to any language that you want. Okay. And that has a massive impact, obviously, on consumption. So you think about those areas, the impact it's going to have on the industries. And that's happening in a lot of industries. So the, the effect is going to be huge. It's just getting the right commercial models now. Mm. Uh, OK, yeah, and ones that stand up to legal challenge, I'm, I'm sure, yes. what you said there, Manish. Uh, so you're obviously very excited about the AI themes. We're going, you, and you're focused this week on your own conference. But we're going to see this event, the government running this AI event at the beginning of November. I know Tom's going to, to, to be there. Um, this is around AI and AI security. From the industry's perspective, what would you like to see coming out of that kind of conversation? I think, I think there's got to be a recognition that AI is a tool. It's a tool for human beings to use to make them more productive. And 
you don't want to stifle that, but you want to make sure it's done in a measured and controlled way. And I think the effects are going to be large. There's going to, they're going to change the nature of jobs. They're going to change the way people interact in, in companies and societies. And I think that's the nice thing that we're seeing with a lot of companies that we're seeing at grassroots levels. They're coming up with very practical, very sensible solutions. So some of the companies that people will see are Raven Pack, Warbus Software. They're really just accumulating huge amounts of data and they're making sense of them, turning them into valuable insights for people. And I think the same is going to happen in media as well. You can create the tracks in the music industry, you can create video from really little input now in a very fast amount of time. And that's going to be good for society. You then just have to grapple with some of the um, potential job replacements and training issues. Mm. And I think if we can get ahead of those, mm. that's going to be one of the most interesting things that could emerge over the next, next few months. So, so that's on AI. It's always a reminder at your event, the All Stars Investors event, just how much work is being done by tech companies and founders and investors across Europe. It's always a reminder just how much activity there is, even in challenging times like there are now in terms of raising capital. But you've, you've talked about the need to kind of scale, the ability to scale and the challenge, particularly that the UK faces there. I'm thinking of British Vault, which is an EV battery maker that failed, Graphcore, which is a chip maker that's struggling to raise capital. What do you think is needed to scale some of these startups? Yeah, I think, it, I mean, there is an issue with the public markets, and I think everyone has spoken about that in Europe. We're seeing signs of life in the US. Three IPOs obviously got away, but small free floats, 10%. In Europe, it's really at a 13-year low in terms of IPOs. Mm. What you're seeing, though, is the industry is reacting. So the private equity community is really stepping up. And you see the amount of funding that's been raised by the growth equity and the private equity uh, funds. They're now, some of them, managing 60 billion under management. That's replacing the IPO market to a large extent. And I think the track... The stat that we track a lot is we kind of set Europe this ambition. Can we raise and build $10 billion companies? And there were zero when we first started tracking this in 2000. Mm. Now there are 19. And that's really showing the ambition levels of the entrepreneurs is rising, but also the financing chain is working. The IPO market is the one that I'd love to fix because that's how we really get to the next level. And there we need all the things that people have spoken about a lot. Analyst coverage, retail investors, yeah. a lot easier to, to deploy capital. Okay, really interesting. So the PE uh, part is there, the private equity component is there. Now you want to see the IPO market reformed to kind of adjust to that as well. Really interesting insights. Manish Madhvani, co-founder and managing partner of GP Bullhound, ahead, of course, of that All Stars Investors event here in London tomorrow. Let's get